Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to um, this Friday's edition of Azure Power Lunch. Uh, my name is Prithvi Reddy, one of uh, Naveed's teammates. And today we're going to talk about um, Azure Private Link. Um, this is a service that many of you are aware of. So, but just a quick quick overview of what Private Link is. It allows you to connect to Azure Private uh, PaaS services from within your virtual network using private endpoints. So why would you want to do this? This would allow you to connect. So a lot of, a lot of folks have Azure Monitor turned on for their, for their resources. Uh, for example, VMs, scale sets, AKS clusters. In order for those resources to send the data um, to Azure Monitor, typically uh, you had to open up firewall rules. Um, for example, you had to whitelist specific URLs for uh, Azure Monitor. For example, you had to whitelist the URLs for the workspace, um, for Insight, application insights, and, and more. And, and as more and more enterprises move to a secure environment, you know, these the firewall admins or the you know your proxy admin, they want they don't want to have to manage all those URLs um, and keep updating them, you know, as products change. So that's really where Private Link came in, where you can connect to all these backend um, Azure PaaS services without having to whitelist them on your firewall. So you can connect privately without opening up any public network access. Um, you can ensure that any data that's being ingested from your VNet over here on the left over to your what's referred to as a log analytics workspace. So with Azure Monitor, all your logs and metrics data resides in this log analytics workspace. Um, the path from your VNet to this workspace will be completely private. So it prevents data exfiltration, which is a big thing for enterprises nowadays. Um, you don't want somebody to be able to open up a firewall, send it, send your log and metrics data off to some place on the internet, right? So you're only allowing ingestion from VNets that you you know and care about. Hey, Prithi, sorry to interrupt. Uh, are you sharing hey. anything? Uh, I am. Are you not seeing it? Are you guys seeing I, it? I'm not. If anybody's seeing it, please let me know. Maybe I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, we, we can see it. it. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. I can sorry, sorry, Prithi, sorry. Go, go ahead. No worries. Yeah, so this ensures that all the traffic stays within the backbone, so it doesn't have to go back through, go back out to the internet to get to these resources. And it makes um, you can also securely connect your on-premise network to Azure Monitor. So, for example, um, with Azure Arc, you probably heard of that. If you have devices on-prem and you want to monitor those as well, you can connect those through Private Link and send them all, send all that data privately to the workspace. So the main res this new resource right here in the middle, it's called Azure Monitor Private Link Scope. Um, and it allows you to set the boundaries on which VNets can connect to the backend workspace. Any questions? And, and then you will link, so you would link the VNet to the Private Link Scope as well as the workspace to the Private Link Scope. Okay, move on to the next one if everybody's okay with that. So what are the things that um, that this accomplishes? Main, main thing here is that from your VNet, uh, most enterprises do want to shut down any um, egress rules to the internet so that there's you want to prevent data exfiltration. So the VNet itself will not have any internet access. And this private endpoint will connect to the, the private link scope, and the private link scope will connect to the workspace. So what this basically means, this is this terminology that's used is it's it's a closed network. So this network is closed off from the internet, and it can connect. It can be used to ingest your your monitoring data. Um, so there's no public routers, um, and it prevents data exfiltration. A little bit of a, of a review from the previous slide. Um, in addition to that, on your workspace. You can you can add additional rules that say block ingestion from the public internet, so nobody can send data to this workspace from the internet. Um, however, you may want to query the data from the Azure portal because when you're looking at data, 
or running a Custo query against your workspace from the Azure portal, that is um, that is considered um, internet traffic. So you may still want to allow queries, but you uh, would definitely want to block ingestion from the from the public internet. Any questions here? So we're it's a closed network for your VNet. Your VNet can't get out to the internet, goes through the private endpoint, and we're closing ingestion so that um, nothing other than this VNet can can ingest into the, the monitoring workspace. OK. So what else can we do here? So here's a scenario where we have a VNet. Um, it's attached to a private link scope. Private link scope is attached to a workspace. So workspace one is restricted. So it's blocking blocking ingestion from the public, but you can go to the portal and do queries from the public. However, on log analytics workspace two, which is a separate workspace, it's tied to some other, it's tied to another VNet. It's it's grayed out here. And then you may have application insights, which is which is yet another resource in Azure. Application Insights gives you things like, hey, what, where did my Java stack trace fail? Um, how many HTTP requests did I get? So all of these can be tied to different, so different VNets. So this VNet right here um, would not be able to access um, this workspace. Only this this VNet can get to it. So you have that that level of gran granularity. Um, any questions here? OK. Uh, one other thing that you need to be aware of when you're using Azure Monitor Private Link Scope, um, many of you as customers, um, when you turn on Azure Monitor, you may have specific requirements to get custom logs. Um, so by default, Azure Monitor collects metrics like CPU, memory, um, disk IO. But Many customers say, hey, I also want to monitor this, this specific log directory where my application logs live. Um, in order to ingest that type of data, you need to have what's called a storage account. And the best practice is to also create a private endpoint from your from, from your VNet to the storage account. And this, so, so those custom logs, IIS logs, syslogs is a big one for um, Linux, Windows event viewer events are big for Windows. Those all get ingested into the customer storage account, and then you would link that storage account to your workspace. So normal path for most of the metrics and logs goes through the um, AMPLS to the workspace. However, if you're using any of these data types, custom logs, syslogs, or Windows events, then those go through this, the storage account, again, through a private endpoint to the workspace. Any questions? OK. Um, last but not least, if you have a lot of VNets in your environment, if you're having to create an AMPLS for every VNet, that could become very cumbersome. Because let's say you have 20 VNets in your environment, and you want all of that traffic to be private. Um, in that scenario, you you know consider all of these as spoke VNets. You would have a line going from this VNet to the same PLS, another one from here. That's very inefficient, right? To create 20 private endpoints. So what Microsoft recommends is to create a hub and spoke architecture. So essentially create a hub VNet, which is where all your shared services reside. Um, you would peer this hub VNet with all your spoke VNets. Now, the one caveat here is you have to make sure there's no overlapping address space because the hub VNet cannot have the same address space as these spoke VNets. But by doing this, you only have to create one endpoint in the hub that connects to the private link scope um, and then gets you over to the workspace rather than tr creating an endpoint in each of the spoke VNets. Does that make sense? Does that create a single point of failure? Uh, Single point of failure, meaning the for the end for the private endpoint itself, and the hub uh, uh, VNet if, in case it goes down. Yeah, the so the VNets themselves, um, Azure has a lot of redundancy within the data centers, 
Um, there are multiple availability zones. Um, so you you can build in resiliency so that um, so your VMs are across multiple AZs. Um, so if there is a failure in that VNet, um, it can it can recover. So that that goes back to your uh, virtual machine resiliency and making sure the VMs that are connecting from this VNet are are across uh, availability zones and um, making sure that these are zo anything else that you have as well is also zone redundant. How does that play into the enterprise scale architecture? So would you put that in the networking hub or in the monitoring management hub? Uh, I would say this is more like a management hub because this is a service. Like, for example, you may have multiple workloads running inside your um, in your environment. Let's say let's say VNet one is your finance department. VNet two is your marketing and VNet three is is, is another group IT. Um, I think it makes more sense to the to to send all that data to a central uh, workspace so you can centralize your logging requirements. Um, you could also put it in your networking hub, but the networking hub is usually used for um, your your express route circuits and connectivity back to on premises. And um, that way you don't you wouldn't, you wouldn't mix like uh, any of your centralized services with your okay. great thanks that's awesome hey prithvi can i ask you a question real quick just to piggyback off the redundancy conversation sure so i've i've had some customers where that are looking for um region redundancy so obviously with any private link there's dns integrations that are there the private endpoints are specifically tied to a region mm -hmm. and certain resources like log analytics or app insights are don't have the same redundancy options that say a storage account does mm -hmm. so for those customers looking to get regional uh, resiliency, you know, mm -hmm. where if e East US goes down and they want everything in West, have mm -hmm. you seen architectures and designs that also are inclusive of uh, AMPLS and the DNS integration for that to survive a regional failure? Yeah, so, so in your, so typically what customers do will have, they'll have multiple regions so, for example, if you have East US 2 and West US 2, um, in your hub network, you would have private endpoints pointing to a set of log analytics workspaces in one region and another set in another region. So, um, if there, so, so you have redundancy in that in that sense. Uh, so what there? what's the well a little bit right? So for, I mean, so what we've done for other customers, like in the case of App Insights. Right, mm -hmm. because that doesn't have geo redundancy. Is we'll okay. send we'll send that data to both of those instances um, at the same time uh, okay. because there there isn't that right in, in a oh, case of I a storage see. account. It does yeah. have global redundancy, right? So we're good there. But log mm -hmm. analytics is a little bit of a different monster too. But there's always that DNS implication if that if East US goes down, there you know there may be some updates that you have to do from a DNS perspective. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you'd have to update your private DNS zone with with the private endpoint in the other region. Right. Yeah. 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 I was just. Yeah. I was curious if if you had seen. I, I hadn't seen a lot of documentation around. Um. You know, sort of what that looks like from a if you're trying to get regional survivability. Yeah, I think what you described is probably the best thing. Send send the data to multiple workspaces that are across. Um, across regions and so if you so you have the data in both places and then if if there is a failure in region one all you have to do is update your um your dns i mean you should you can also pre-state uh, might uh, we might have lost you man i don't or may, it might just be me but i yeah, yeah, I lost the audio. Okay, yeah, I was just saying that I think that I think what you're doing is right, where you have where you're sending the data to multiple workspaces, and those are those are uh, regionally in different regions, essentially. Gotcha. Thanks, yeah. man. Yep.
Uh, so the, this is just another, this is just talking about the maximums that are, um, some maximums that you need to be aware of. So you can only have a maximum of five AMPLS. Um, so that's actually um, gone up to 50 now. Um, and you can, you can have up to 50 workspaces uh, attached to a private link scope. Um, and you can have the 10 endpoints linked to a private link scope. So once you hit 10, you'll have to create another private link scope once you hit 10 private endpoints. Once you hit uh, more than 50 workspaces, you'll have to create another. Now there is work. Um, it hasn't been released yet, but this number, a lot of customers have said, hey, we have more than 50. So there's been there's some work going on to increase that limit. So it, it does continuously go up. Um, so this may be the question that was asked earlier about DNS over overrides. When you create your um, private endpoint um, within your VNet, th there is uh, there's something called a private DNS zone, um, and that private DNS zone is updated with the with this private endpoint IP. Um, now, if you have two different VNets, um, obviously this there will be a separate DNS zone with another IP address um, out of this VNet, right? So the key thing that I want to explain here is like if you have overlapping address space, let's say you have the same um, VNet space for VNet one and VNet two. Um, <laughs> the key thing is you need to have a separate DNS zone for each of these VNets, and I'll show that pictorially in the portal when we go through the demo. Um, or you can peer these two together, making sure there's no overlapping address space, but that's more work if you do peering. Um, we already went over this. Okay, let's uh, switch into demo since we only have 10 minutes left. Um, good questions, guys. Are you guys able to see my screen still? Yeah, we'll get you. Yep. Okay. So the search bar at the top, this is how you find it Azure Monitor Private Link Scope. Uh, very easy to create private link scope. You you provide your subscription, the resource group where you want to put put the scope. Um, we'll just give it a name, AMPLS demo. Tags if you need them. Most people don't. We'll just go ahead and create the scope. Okay, so once the private link scope has been created, this is where you attach your workspaces to that scope. So under configure Azure Monitor resources, you will click the add button here. And you can look at all the different subscriptions you have um, and choose the, the appropriate log analytics workspace. So for example, um, some demo subscriptions here. In East US, and this is this was a good question that was asked earlier. How do I get regional redundancy? And the solution that was provided is excellent because you may have a workspace. Um, you would have a workspace attached in this scenario. You have a default a workspace attached to East US, and you have a workspace attached to West US. And what you can do here is you can select this workspace, um, East US. Um, oops, let's do this again. I'm not sure why that, let's do this again. Um, okay, let's just create a log analytics workspace. I think it's already attached to another um, MPLS. So let's just do this quickly. So we'll create a log analytics workspace. And this is the key part that um, I'm not sure who asked the question earlier. So you, we can create this workspace in central US. 
And this has to be unique. So just use your initials. Wow. OK. <laughs> um, OK, so we did a workspace the validation passed. If we jump back to our uh, AMPLS here, go to Azure Monitor Resources. We're going to add this new workspace that was just created. So we've linked, we're linking this workspace to this um, private link scope. But the question earlier was, how do you get regional redundancy? You could also link. Um, another log analytics workspace from let's say the east region to the same private link scope so now your your monitoring agents are, are going to be sending the data to both um, to both workspaces essentially um, so once you've done that you, this is the destination you have to set the source where is your traffic coming from so this is essentially you're creating a private endpoint so you click here create a private endpoint um, I'm going to create it in this subscription um, within within my resource group. I'm just going to call it PE MPLS demo. Um, so key thing here, we're going to we're going to select our private link scope. So if you can do a full filter here for um, one sec. Sorry guys, I uh, <laughs> not finding the uh, scope here. But anyway, there is a. You can also connect to it by a resource ID if you if we don't know the name of the. Um, so let's just back here. We're going to go into Azure Monitor Private Link Scope. So every resource in Azure has what's called a unique resource ID. So if you go down here to Properties, um, there's a resource ID associated with this Private Link Scope. Um, so you copy this, just click on the Copy to Clipboard. Um, change this radio button to connect to an Azure resource by resource ID. And then the target sub resource um, is going to be here. And then this is where the private DNS zone gets created. Um, and it will automatically add your endpoint to the zone. So in this particular case, um, you need to have a VNet deployed. Um, in this case, uh, there's not a VNet, but you would, you would select the VNet, the private endpoint would get created within that VNet. Um, and the private DNS zone would get would get created as well. Um, we have about four minutes. I can do one thing. Let's do this. I'm going to find a VNet that's already there, and we're going to create it within that VNet. So uh, here's a virtual machine I have, and I want this VM to send the data to um, AMPLS. So if I go here, this is in this VNet AMLOS net VNet default. Um, so we're going to use we're going to create the private uh, private endpoint in this VNet um, and this this resource group, which is AM, AMS West US2. So let's do this one more time. Um, so we'll go back to private link, private endpoints. Going to hit add. Going to make sure we select the right resource group, AMS West 2, because I've got a VNet there. I'm going to call it AMPLS Private Endpoint. 
We're going to use the resource ID that we copied earlier. Um, that's not it. It's this one right here to the private link scope. Um, we got to provide the sub resource, which is monitor. Now we have the option to choose our VNet. I'm going to choose the default VNet to create my private endpoint. And we're going to hit create. Okay, <laughs> let's do this one more time. Sorry guys, I probably should have pre-staged all this for you. It's nothing like doing a live demo. Uh, give me one second. <laughs> I think we're running out of time. The error I had here, the actual sub resource for this is um, Azure Monitor. My apologies. So we're going to update the, the JSON here, review and create again. Um, request message, we'll say private endpoint. Choose our resource group again. AMS West 2, and now it will go through validation passed. So is there, did everybody follow what we did? We created a log analytics workspace, attached it to the AMPLS, created a private endpoint, um, created a private endpoint within our VNet. Um, now our private endpoint has been created, and this is where I was mentioning earlier, uh, it automatically creates a um, private endpoint within within my VNet, and this this private endpoint is what's used to send all your data, your monitoring data to um, to the um, workspace. Now you see here how it says pending. Um, the last step, last but not least, is you have to approve it. So you go to private link. Uh, pending connections right here um, and approve it. Um, now, the reason why I have I have to approve it is workspace was in a different subscription than my uh, my VM. So I have to actually go to my other subscription and approve it from there. <laughs> so that's what that's one thing I inadvertently showed you. You could have a workspace in a separate subscription than your uh, VM. And that, that's really great when you have like a centralized logging system. So in this scenario, the, the actual workspace is sitting in, um, in another one of my subscriptions. So I have to go to that subscription and approve the endpoint. But I think we're right at time. Uh, any questions? Okay, just going to show this last part. We're over time, but um, this is what I meant. The, the actual workspace is sitting in this subscription. So here, since I'm the owner of this workspace, somebody requested access to my workspace that's in, let's say, like the question that was an excellent question that was asked earlier. Uh, I may be a, a management team and I have a management subscription and people create private endpoints to send all their data to a central workspace. They've created a private endpoint. I have to go as, an, as a management owner and approve that endpoint. Well, uh, and then fail to approve. Okay. Uh, because the supported locations are only this. Okay. Any any case, um, that, that error basically means that you're... Um, private endpoint has to be in the same region as your um, as your workspace. So I think we're out of time. Um, 
Hope hope this was helpful, guys. Um, Prithi, I have one quick question. Um, sure, go ahead. Can you go back to the PowerPoint? Yes. And then uh, go back to where you showed the difference between having a the storage account versus the um, Bnet connection or something. Right yeah. Here. Yeah. So if a customer yeah, the storage account is only needed if you're sending custom logs, IS logs, or sys logs from your VM to right. the to the log analytics workspace. Okay. All the standard metrics, those right. can be sent directly through the private link scope. So then, is there if they do have the custom logs and sys logs from Linux systems, what do they have to? What needs to be, I guess, whitelisted or unblocked to get that customer storage into LA workspace one? Uh, so there's no whitelist. All, all they have to do is create a private endpoint within okay. their VNet to that storage account. So okay. in both scenarios, uh, we're eliminating the need for a whitelist. Essentially, people want to move away from having to tell their firewall team, hey, whitelist all these URLs mm -hmm. for monitoring and control all that within your VNet. So, so all this traffic flows um, through the Azure backbone, you don't have to contact your network administrator and um, deploy an Azure firewall or deploy a proxy server and, and whitelist URL. So you, you don't have to do any of that anymore, essentially. Okay. So they just have to create a private endpoint that points to the storage to connect to the... Correct. Okay. That's all I have. I know we're over time, but thanks for uh, hanging in there. Um, We'll talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks for the week. Thanks, Rudy.